Willis Carrier is known as the father of air conditioning. He invented the apparatus to control temperature and humidity. Interestingly enough, his first system didn't use the refrigeration cycle. He was actually able to use groundwater to control it. But he also invented the psychometric chart. He was able to see and figure out how air worked and made a chart designing it. We still use that chart today for HVAC and also even for the weatherman. But that chart's a little too advanced for you right at this moment. I can't wait to get to that video though because it's really cool once you get to see how air moves and how air works. But the key part of that is before we could control temperature with ice. We could use melting ice to control temperature and actually size systems based on tons of ice, which we still use today for air conditioning. But that had a problem not being able to control the humidity. It actually made the humidity worse. And that's a huge issue. And Willis Carrier's invention wasn't used for people at all. It was for the textile industry. And being able to control the humidity and the temperature was able to drive the progress so much farther for the textile industry. Then later, he's able to use it to sell to the ultra rich so they can control the temperature and the humidity in their homes. Now, so many people have it, but we've forgotten about the humidity aspect of it. It is so incredibly important for you to remember the humidity aspect is a huge part of comfort. They make a chart called the comfort chart, and it talks about different temperatures and different humidities. You've ever heard of the heat index? It takes into account temperature and humidity. Humidity is huge as how it affects the body. And not only being able to cool the house, but also pull the moisture out of the air or dehumidify the air is so, so important. If we have too much moisture in the air, we actually end up with types of growth in the air and the growth in the wall. And they even sometimes have to tear a house down because of it. So it's a really big issue. If we have the air too dry, we get other types of things growing, other types of bacteria and, and whatnot growing that also has an indoor air quality issue. If the air is too dry, it also dries out your throat, causes furniture to crack, causes a lot of other issues. So we have a range of humidity that we're looking for, but humidity is very, very important. I've many times gone out to a house and the customer said, I've had five or six people out here trying to fix this unit and nobody can fix it. And I checked the temperature and I also checked the humidity. And I found out that most of the time it's a humidity issue. They're not dehumidifying the house. So they turn the temperature down lower and lower and lower. And interestingly enough, when you turn the temperature down lower, the humidity in the house actually goes up and it makes you feel more uncomfortable. So people are spending all kinds of extra money in their electric bill trying to turn your temperature down even lower to try to feel comfortable when it's not a temperature issue at all. It's a humidity issue. Humidity is massive and for some reason it's overlooked by service technicians. I understand customers don't know HVAC, but when you get out into the field, you need to be thinking humidity, humidity, humidity. Humidity is a big issue. One of the biggest causes for humidity is an oversized air conditioner. You get people that are sizing by square foot per ton, which is absolutely ridiculous. And the systems are oversized and they're too big. When you get a system that's too big, yeah, it cools the air fast, but it doesn't dehumidify. And not having that dehumidification causes huge problems with the house itself, the humans inside the house, and their comfort. It's a very big issue. We want to make sure we size these systems correctly. We also want to make sure we seal the house correctly so that we're not having humidity move through the walls, creating even more growth inside those walls. So humidity is a big part of comfort and it's sometimes, most of the time, it's overlooked, unfortunately. So this AC system needs to be sized to match the house. It actually needs to run for a certain amount of time so it actually is able to pull the humidity out of the air. If this unit comes on and shuts right back off, not only is it going to kill this equipment very quickly, but it's not going to dehumidify. And there's a whole lot that goes into dehumidification and we're going to be talking about that as we go. My goal right now is to get you thinking about humidity. Now, another thing about humidity is it's vapor in the air. It's a gas state. As we hit that across this evaporator coil, we're going to want to make that humidity condense, change state from a vapor back into a liquid form. The way that we can do that is by controlling its temperature. We want to make sure this evaporator coil is below a thing called dew point. Dew point is the point where a vapor turns back into a liquid. So every temperature in the house depends on the humidity level will have a different dew point. And as you start drying a house out, the dew point temperature changes. We want to make sure this evaporator coil is below that dew point temperature so that we can pull the moisture out of the air. We want to make sure this air conditioner has enough run time so it's able to pull the AC, pull that humidity out of the air. If you ever thought if your system was oversized, think about this. On the hottest possible day of the year, does that system cycle off? And if it does cycle off on the hottest possible day of the year, that system is definitely oversized. On the hottest day of the year, even though it's only 
a big issue for people, that's the day that should really be running nonstop. It should be taking heat out of the house at the same rate the heat's coming back in. And if that system's cycling off in the very hottest part of the year, then it's never having enough runtime to dehumidify the rest of the year. I hear people all the time say, oh, I need my system set at, at 72. I need it set at 70. I need it set at 68. All these ridiculously low temperatures. When I go in and find out their big issue is the humidity is too high. Now, one of the problems is some big box AC company goes out, sells them a new unit, sometimes even a bigger unit, and it causes even worse dehumidification. Now I gotta tell this customer, hey, your system's oversized. We need to seal your house and put you in a smaller system. They can't afford it, but there is some other options. There's dehumidifiers. There's portable dehumidifiers you can put in the house, but you gotta remember to empty that water every day or sometimes multiple times a day. Or you can get a professional dehumidifier installed that actually has a thermistat. It's a humidistat that controls also on temperature and humidity. That will actually pull moisture out of the air. Now up north, there's a lot more heat pump systems and to have a heat pump sized big enough for the heat load in the winter will be oversized in the summertime. So up north, it's very common to install a heat pump AC system and also a dehumidifier to pull the humidity out in the summer. Works really well. Sometimes of year, you ever notice where the temperature is really great, but it just feels muggy and uncomfortable? Humidity issue. In that case, you can run a dehumidifier, pull the moisture out of the air, and have the air at perfect temperature. There's even places that have houses underground. Humidity is very high. They just use dehumidifiers. They keep the house cool by the ground around them. They pull the moisture out of the air, and they even use that moisture they pull out of the air to flush the toilets and things like that. So there's lots and lots of things you can do thinking about water. But this evaporator coil needs to have enough air running across it long enough to pull the moisture out. Now these little fins on these coils are key to that. That evaporator is going to be at a certain type of a slant. And what happens is that moisture condenses, changing state from a vapor to a liquid on this coil. And then it's going to run down these fins to a drain pan. That drain pan is going to collect the water and then it's going to have a drain line draining it outside. In some cases it goes into a pump that we pump it back up and over outside. But that water that's coming out is the water from the air. A lot of customers and a lot of new technicians sometimes don't realize that. I've taught many times in Phoenix and also Las Vegas, it's a very dry climate. So there's very little dehumidification happening. But they do have the rainy season where it actually does have some rain. Humidity goes crazy high, like 30%. In the labs, the AC will have water be running out of them. The students freak out. This thing is leaking water. What's happening? It's that dehumidification. In Florida, they'll put up several five, six, seven, ten 10 gallons of water a day. They're pulling that moisture out of the air. It's very important though that we keep the air, the house sealed so we're not bringing that moisture right back in. So dehumidification is essential. Also, this evaporator coil is key part of that. Notice how this coil has all these dings and dents on it. The problem is that water runs down, hits into these dings, and then it starts dripping off. So here we have the slant of this coil. The water hits that and it drops off outside of the drain pan and starts running down into the unit. Can rust out a heat exchanger in a gas furnace, can burn out a blower motor, can cause damage to a house. Also, these drain lines have to be maintained and serviced, and this drain pan's maintained and serviced well so that we don't end up with this clogging up. If it clogs up, it's gonna overflow. If it's in the attic, it'll ruin an entire ceiling. On top of that, once the ceiling gets soaked, the ceiling falls down and ruins everything below it. So doing maintenance and making sure that this system's working correctly, dehumidifying correctly, and also that drain line and drain systems taken care of is key. Now, another big part of that is the filter. If you have a poor filter or the filter is not changed often, that allows a lot of dirt to come through. Now you have a wet coil in a dark space with dirt on there that ends up a prime location for growth. And that growth will clog up these drain pans and clog up the drain lines. We're going to talk about solutions for that a little bit later on when we get into maintenance, but be thinking about humidity is a big issue. It's also an issue with the unit. We need to make sure that we have this balance for the customer's happiness. And also we take care of the service. So that's not going to be an issue. Now, there is 970 B2s to change state from a vapor to a liquid that's condensing. So what's interesting is moisture out of the air is condensing on this, conde on this evaporator coil. It's condensing and going at the condensate drain because it's condensed water. So the evaporator coil is absorbing sensible heat out of the air. It's physically cooling the air off. The temperature of the air drops, but it also absorbs latent heat from the air as well. It takes moisture from the air, changing state from a vapor back to a liquid. 
970 BTUs of heat energy is going into this evaporator coil for every one pound of water that's coming out. If you remember in an earlier video how much a pound of water was, it was like a 16 ounce glass of water. So think about for every one of these that comes out, that's 970 BTUs. That's capacity and heat energy that's going into our AC system. So when this evaporator coil inside is absorbing sensible heat and it's also absorbing latent heat from the air. On the outside of the unit, when it's rejecting heat, it's only rejecting sensible heat into the air because they we're not putting moisture in the air outside. To get the moisture out, that's our drain line. So inside, we're absorbing sensible heat and latent heat from the air and we're rejecting only sensible heat into the air outside. It's a very key part of HVAC is making sure we take into account temperature and humidity big part of customer comfort and also our system and our system operation so temperature and humidity play effect on this evaporator coolant it's very important